So today I'm taking a look at a copy of Doom for the SNES. Owner of this one says that it'll start up, but when he goes to actually get into the game, it'll play the music for E1M1, and then it's just a black screen. Now, something he did try also was try loading on the Retron 5, which, if you know how that works, he'll just dump the game ROM and then emulate it. So he said when he put, played on the Retron, it seemed like it was working fine. So that leads me to believe that there's something going on with the RAM on the board. So let me go ahead and start this up. And we'll take a look and see what this is doing. Okay, so we got the splash screen. And got the music. Pressing buttons, but I don't see them trying to open a door or fire or nothing. So let's go ahead and crack this open and see what's going on with the board. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this open. And the very first thing we're going to try to do is reflow the RAM and see if that fixes our problem. Possible that it's a bad solder joint, but it might just need a new RAM chip altogether. And there's the game board. So you got your ROM chip, your RAM, Super FX. This little guy over here and the crystal, which they all control the clock. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to flex this up, and I'm going to try to refill in the RAM. And it should be that simple. Okay, look it over with the magnifying glass. Looks like everything's good. Let me go ahead and test it out now. Yeah, we still get the opening credits. That's good. And there we go, now the game is actually playing. So there we go, it's just a bad solder joint on the RAM chip. Let me go ahead and move the camera over, and then I'll show you that. Alright, there's the Doom board. And let's see how close I can get on this. There you go, there's the RAM chip. As you saw, I just put a little bit of flux on it. Tinned up my iron, then I just drug it across all the pins. And let me go ahead and turn on the TV and I'll show it loading. Alright, but that's not all we're going to do today. Because this label is in such bad shape, I'm going to turn off the TV so you can see a little bit better. Because the label is in such bad shape, the owner of it, he asked me if I would actually turn this into Star Fox 2 for him after I got it working. So, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to program a chip for Star Fox 2. We're going to take off that mask ROM, peel off this label, and then we're going to make Star Fox 2. Woohoo! Okay, so I got Star Fox 2 programmed to a chip. So first thing I need to do is pull off the mask ROM, so I'm going to go ahead and start up the hot air station. 
While I'm waiting on that to heat up, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on these pins. That'll just help the solder melt easier. Alright, so now the hot air station is at about 360C with pretty low airflow. Then you just heat up all the pins so you can just slide it right off. There we go. Looks like I pull off the capacitor also, so I'll have to put that back on there. Alright, next thing I want to do, I want to flux up all these joints. And I'm going to use some desoldering braid to just pull up the excess solder. Okay, there's one side of the capacitor back. Alright, so then I got that all nice and cleaned up. So this is the chip that I'm going to use for Star Fox 2. I found these a few years ago and I bought up all that I could. It's an 8 megabit SOP32 package. So we still have to swap in the ROM. We still need to cross wires 24 and 31. So 31 is connected to this ground fill right here. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape off a bit of that and then make a cut. So I can kind of isolate this little area right here. And then 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. It's right here. Flip the board over. You can see that it goes from this via right here to this one right here. So then I'm going to make a cut in the board right about there. Maybe right about there. Then that way I can just easily cross the two wires together. After I scrape off a little bit of solder mask covering the via. So first things first, let me go ahead and get my X-Acto knife and start making some cuts. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit first. Let's get a little bit of acetone on the Q-tip. Right, and I'm going to scrape away some of that solder mask. Okay, it's still connected to the ground, so we got a little bit more cutting to do. There we go, now we got that one severed. Okay, now we're going to take care of that trace next. This one I want to be extra careful with since I got the other traces right there. Alright, all severed. Let's go ahead and solder on this ROM. Clean off the iron a little bit. this side.
Yeah, let's go over it one more time. Pull off all the excess solder. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit more flux and a nice pull of solder right on this exposed copper right here. Right, let's get that wire attached. And this is going to need to come right down here to this via that we cut earlier. That should be good enough. Now take the tweezers, put it right into that V there. Got to go off camera for a second so I can see what I'm doing here. Got the via inserted right into that hole there. Just gonna flux that up a little bit. And put some solder on. Yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and clean that joint up a little bit. And make sure that I didn't bridge anything to the ground when I put all that solder on there. Just want to clean the flux off because then that way it's going to make it easier to actually make good contact with the multimeter. And unfortunately it looks like I did end up bridging it back over the ground.
might just end up having to make a new cut in there. Alright, so I think what I'm going to end up doing is just re-solder this down, and I'll just make a new cut in the ground plane. Okay, put on our light, looks like it should be severed up and down, so now I just should just need to go left and right. There we go. No more connection. Alright, so now what we gotta do is bridge the output enable over to ground. So let's go ahead and take care of that next. I'm doing a quick test run. Usually if you leave the output enable floating, the game will start up. And the game's already playing, you can probably hear in the background. So I know that the ROMs program correctly, game's working, RAM's all good, all that good jazz. So last thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and run a ground wire. Which probably end up using just this uh, little uh, exposed copper area right here. And just connect it right here in the air. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scrape off the top side of this via. Then I can just run a wire straight through. And solder point right there. Actually, this might be ground fill right here. In which case, I might be able to just do a solder jumper. So I've already scraped off a bunch of copper incidentally. Check on that. Right, so this one's ground. I can never remember which one's ground. All right, yeah. So apparently that's ground right there. So I'm just going to scrape off a little bit more and see if I can just do a solder jumper on those two. And if need be, I could just lay a component leg or something over to two if it doesn't want to just jump. And there we go, that worked out quite well. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean the board up with some more acetone. And then we should be able to just wrap this up. Where are my Q-tips at? So acetone will eat plastic, so if you're going to be working with this to fix up some of your games and clean up some solder joints, make sure you keep it away from any cart shells. And just to make sure. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yep, so it's connecting the ground. Alright, shut off the multimeter and put the cap back on the acetone. Again, I don't want to melt any cart shells or my TV remote or anything like that. And let me show you Star Fox 2 working on the SNES. And here's the finished Star Fox 2 board. So reflow the RAM, and that cut is super ugly on camera. So there's the cut and the wire that I ran. 
then the wire runs over to that via then I just put the solder bridge right on this via over to the ground plane and let me go ahead and power on the TV and I'll show you that running Sorry about all the sniffling, I'm starting to come down with the cold. It is what it is. And there you go. So now it's going to go back in the Doom shell. I actually didn't print any labels for this. I actually just ordered some because they're die cut and they're a lot nicer than the ones I used to print out. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to record it or not, but basically just the way I'm going to take off the Doom label is I'm going to heat it up, try to peel off what I can. Anything that doesn't come off, I'm going to use like some orange glow or goo gone, something like that to just take all the adhesive off. And then I'll go over with some alcohol to take off any residual residue that's left over from the orange clean. And then once the label comes in, I'll take a picture of that and I'll show you how that looks. And now I got the label cleared off of the shell. So it wasn't too hard, just heat up and I peeled off what I could. After that I soaked it in some goo gone. Helps dissolve the adhesive. Then I was able to just come in and just kind of scrape it off my fingernail. Give another coat of goo gone. And now it's all looking clean. So I think I actually know what happened with this cart. <clears throat> As you can see right here, there's a big uh, damage area right here. I guess call that a crack but it's the back one if you look over here you can see there's a crack that goes all the way through the shell that looks like it's barely just being held on where the sticker is on the opposite side so I think probably what happened with this is when it was in the game store or just somewhere else and probably either got stepped on or has some heavy like a CRT TV set on the shell which cracked the case and in which turn also broke some of the solder joints on the RAM chip. So that's why just reflowing it was enough to make the game work again. So I'm still waiting on the label so when that comes in I'll show you how that looks. And I'm back with the finished car. So as you can see right there it looks pretty good. Got the nice end label on it. Now if the light hits it just right you can kind of see that little crack in the front of the shell right there. But well, just giving it a panting glance, can't really see anything too wrong with it. And there's the back side, back label still pretty well intact, you can still kind of see the stamp that's in it there. And that's how I go about repairing games and converting them into Star Fox 2. So next time I got something else I'm going to fix up, check back.